John Mabry. I'm director of the Iowa Pork Industry Center here at Iowa State University. Uh, we are in the research and extension part of the university and we work uh, quite a bit with swine software systems, specifically in database decision making for the swine producers here in Iowa. Uh, recently we've had an awful lot of discussion about reaching a magical level of production called 30 pigs per sow per year. Uh, this is something that's been used from a marketing standpoint by an awful lot of entities and most of the sow management system software that's available to producers does measure this trait of pigs weaned per sow per year. But as we look at these traits to measure return in a unit, we have to think about just how those traits are calculated. Because we're finding some of our commercial entities are using this 30 pigs per sow per year from a marketing perspective. And sometimes their uh, way of measuring this trait gets perhaps a bit optimistic. So what I thought I would do today would be just to go through a brief history of how this trait's been measured in the past and how it's currently being measured as perhaps a guide to better interpret the information and data that's coming from your farm. One of the traits we use to measure output from the farm is litters per sow per year. For instance, if you had a 1,000 sow farm and you fed 2,300 litters in a one-year period of time, common sense would say you had 2.30 litters per sow per year. This is very consistent, very clean, if you're looking at fairly long intervals, such as a year of time. However, if you start looking at shorter intervals, particularly something like weeks, then we know that sows do not evenly space themselves out with 1 52nd of the productivity each and every week. Instead, there will be some ups and downs as we go from one week to the next. And you can see this litters per sow per year variable change anywhere from a 2.5 to a 1.85, something like that range on a weekly basis. Now, the reason this has some importance is that some farms pay their personnel on a bonus system where if they reach certain performance thresholds, they get a little bit, bit of extra return. And it would create a little bit of a problem when the weekly variability would go up and down by that much. So as a result, when we tried to standardize the calculations of traits like litters per sow per year, they, the National Pork Board formed a committee called the Production and Financial Standards. And they created a way to measure litters per sow per year and pigs wean per sow per year that had a little more of a smoothing effect so that when we looked at the performance from one week to the next it was a little bit more consistent. For instance in litters per sow per year it looked at this as the sum of the successful gestation days in the herd as a percentage of the total sow breeding female days in the herd and then annualized that. This was a very legitimate calculation but when you applied it to a week or a month's period you would have a group of sows that were pregnant during that period but hadn't farrowed yet. So were those days successful gestation days or not within the calculations? They decided that they would assume these were successful gestation days. And as a result, although we got a smoothing effect on traits such as litters per sow per year and pigs wing per sow per year, it was a little bit optimistic because some of those sows that were pregnant in one week might have recycled the next week or two or three weeks down the road. So when you started looking at shorter time frames for the trade of litters per sow per year or pigs wean per sow per year, it got to be a little bit optimistic. It was still very accurate over long, longer periods of time, particularly six months and more, but for the shorter periods perhaps gave us a little bit of an optimistic measure of our performance.